Welcome to lesson four. In this lesson, we're going to revisit the reactive stream specification, focusing specifically on how we can use the reactive stream types as a mechanism for interoperability across open source projects, across projects like Lightbin's Aka Streams, like the Vertex project, like RxJava 2, and of course, uh, the various Spring projects that support the reactive stream specification. In this lesson, we're going to look specifically at the Lightbend Aka Streams project as a way to solve certain computation problems uh, in conjunction with Spring Webflux and Spring Data Reactive MongoDB. In this lesson, we're going to revisit the reactive streams specification. We're going to look at it as a, uh, as a, a compatibility layer, a, a, a standard uh, across which uh, different projects can interoperate. Uh, and we're going to do so today in terms of both Spring and in Akka. So let's go ahead and build a very simple example here. We're going to build an ex example called the, let's say, Tweet service. All right? We're going to use the reactive web support, of course. We use Lumbach. And I think that's it. That's all we need from the Spring side. We'll generate that. And we'll open this up in our IDE, as usual. CD downloads, UAO tweet service, and we'll open this up in our ID, and then we're going to add the, uh, the dependencies that we need here. So the reactive stream specification ultimately is uh, just a, a set of four different interfaces. Uh, these interfaces are common enough, they're, they're, they serve as a foundation for different APIs, and they serve as a, a way for different APIs to talk to each other. So perhaps the API isn't based upon the reactive stream specification, but it can uh, ven and consume instances of, of types from the reactive stream sp specification. So here, we're going to look at two different projects, that uh, one of which is founded on, that's the project reactor, and, and thus the uh, support for uh, reactive programming in Spring and, and Reactor, and another project which can ven and consume that, namely Akka. Now, let's add these types to the class path here. So we're going to use Akka stream test kit 2.11 version 2.5.2, and it's going to be com.typesafe.aka. All right, so we've got these three types. This type's in the class path. Uh, let's add also the um, aka stream core as well. So there we are. Now, aka stream is a processing library similar to Reactor. It's a library that allows you to operate on reactive pipelines. Now, at the heart of Reactor is its own idea of a flow but it can also be used to, to create um, publishers and uh, subscribers. Right? So you, can, you can vend those types and you can consume those types. So we're going to build an application that's going to manage data. And of course, I've forgotten to add Spring Boot Starter MongoDB Reactive. We're going to add that to the class path here. And we're going to build an application that manages data that will persist into a MongoDB persistence tier. So we'll create some types. This application that we're going to build is modeled after an example in the Akka Streams documentation. So it's fairly similar, but not quite exact, right? We are going to create a type here, an ID, text field, a uh, author type. So we'll create an author. We need a class of type author, so class author. And the author itself is going to have a private string ID at ID, all right? So there's our basic types, but of course this is Java, so we need more than that. We need to annotate them first as documents that can be persisted in MongoDB. And then we need getters and setters and all that kind of stuff. So we need data, ought, all args constructor, at no args constructor, all these basic types, all these basic things that you need in Java. We're going to go ahead and take care of that with Lumbach. All right? And that gives us the basic skeleton of what we're going to do here. Now, this tweet type is going to have an accessor for the hashes, the hashtags that represent this tweet. So we're going to have public set hashtag and git hashtags. Maybe we should make this the hashtag. And we'll come back to the author in a second. The author looks like this. It's, a, um, it's going to have a field called string handle. Handle at id. All right. So at data, at all args constructor, at no args constructor, and at document. All right. So there's the, the types there. I'm going to have a method that's an accessor for the hashtags for this thing. And we're going to say return arrays dot stream. I'm going to take the text of the tweet, and I'm going to split it into 
an array, which we're then going to filter. T, I'm going to say if T dot starts with hashtag, we want to keep it. Then I want to map the data that we get back. So, you know, the word will be turned into a um, new hashtag. And the hashtag will uh, be comprised of the data in that text. And we're going to use a regular expression to unpack the bits that match this regular expression. So replace all, create a regular expression that looks for everything that starts with a hashtag, and then it is followed by a word. All right. So there's the regular expression. I want to replace that with a space. And we're going to say two lowercase. All right. And then that. We're going to collect everything here into a collection, into a set. All right. There we go. So there's our domain model. And now we need to actually build some data, some services that actually work with that. Right. So we're going to create a service that processes this data. So let's see here. At service class tweet service. And the tweet service is going to take advantage of the repository that stores this data. It's a MongoDB repository here that we're going to create to store the data in the MongoDB. And it's a reactive repository. We're going to call it a tweet repository. Extends reactive Mongo repository tweet string. All right. And uh, with that, we have part of what we need to be able to address the use cases supported by the service. The service is going to do processing on the data. It's going to have granular methods that support business logic uh, and also just reading and, and kind of arriving at synthesized views of the data. All right. So we're going we're gonna to do that here. We're going to say, I want to have an endpoint that will give me all the tweets. So that's our, our method that will give me all the, all the tweets. So publisher of tweet, get uh, all tweets. All right. I'm going to say return this.tweet repository, tweet repository, repository, and we'll say repository.find all. Very good. There's that. And we want to have another endpoint that will return all the hashtags from all of the tweets. And so we need to do a little bit of processing here. And here we can take advantage of Aka streams. Okay? So we're going to say publisher of hashtag get hashtags. Now, of course, keep in mind, the hashtags are part of the tweet, right? So we need to actually um, unpack that. Let's do that here, get hashtags. That's a cleaner way to, to describe that type there. And then what we're going to do is we're going we're to create a method that uses Aka streams, as I say, up here. I'm going to say return source here. We're going to use the Java DSL here. So we're going to say return source dot from a publisher. And the publisher, in this case, is the tweets, all the tweets. And then uh, we're going to map the data. So tweet get uh, hashtags. And then from here, we want to reduce all of the different tweets into a um, single thing. So we're going to have a method that returns a joined version of anything that it sees. So private set, we'll say private t set of t join, and it'll be set t input input. All right. So we're going to say that we want to do, let's say, set of t set equals new hash set return s. Okay. And then set dot add all. And it'll be two different sets here, a and set B. B. All right, so there's our two different sets. And now we're going to join them together. And then we're going to concatenate everything that we have here. So we're going to say new function set of hashtag to a iterable of hashtag. All right, so we're going to create a iterable of hashtags given a set of hashtags. Okay. That's fairly easy to do. So we can just actually return the input as output. It's an identity call, really. This gets rewritten fairly easily. We can just say in is out. 
right? Hashtags. That status as a contract. Map concat. We do want to keep the type information there, so we're going to say that it's a function of set of hashtag. And then we're going to run this whole thing with a sync. And we're going to talk about a sync in a second, but let's see if that all works. Okay, it looks like it's okay. So now, we need some way to take this publisher, this pipeline rather, this flow, and turn it into something that we can then process. And we want a publisher out of this, right? So we're going to give it, we're going to use the concept of a sync. So again, in ACA streams, you've got this concept of a source. Over here, you're going to have a concept of a sync. So the source is the thing that originates the data. The sync is the thing that accepts the incoming data and does something with it. Well, in this case, I want to distribute computation across ACA actors. Now, ACA is an actor framework. Actors are uh, a way of describing computation uh, in a way that uh, doesn't require a lot of thinking about concurrency. It's based ultimately on the Erlang OTP model, the uh, model that allowed for systems to be very, very highly available, very, very, very scalable, by having a supervisory hierarchy that babysits basically lots of possibly failure-prone processes and restarts them if anything shall go wrong. This supervisory hierarchy means that systems built in such a way have, uh, you know, five nines, six nines, and, and so on, of availability. We need to uh, take advantage of ACA, but I, I don't have ACA in play right now. We're using ACA streams, but we're not necessarily using ACA, right? This sync can be anything you want it to be, so we need to configure ACA, and that's where we're going to create a little configuration class here. And we're going to create a few beans here that we need. We need the actor system for ACA. Okay, so return actor system dot create. I'm going to call this beautiful ACA stream. All right, there's this. It's a configuration class. And uh, we'll create a bean of type actor materializer. All right, so return actor materializer dot create and we'll say this dot actor system. Okay, there we go. That's going to be two beans that we need. I'm going to use that actor materializer in the service. So we'll say private actor materializer. Add the constructor arguments there and uh, we'll use that here. We'll say sync dot as publisher is going to be true. I'm going to pass in this dot actor materializer. And there we are. That'll give us all the hashtags. And with that in place, we can now create an endpoint that returns all of this data. We can actually create a REST endpoint that will have the data that we want to be able to look at. So let's create a, a very simple Spring WebFlux functional reactive endpoint here. And we'll say class. How do we want to do this? I guess we could just put it in as part of the bean, as part of the uh, application up here. It's just a bean after all. So router function, server response, routes, and I will say return router functions dot route request predicates dot get forward slash tweets new handler function and we're just going to create a very simple endpoint one that's going to handle the tweets endpoint right so server response dot okay dot body and we're going to in order to do this we're going to use the tweet service naturally so we'll say tweet service dot get all tweets tweet dot class, and uh, we can simplify this a good deal, of course. Use some static imports, and remove the, uh, there you go, static import again. again. So that's the tweets endpoint, and we're going to have another endpoint that handles hashtags. So let's do that. So server response body dot tweet service get all hashtags. Of course, this is a hashtag.class. All right. Okay, so there we go. There's our, our different endpoints, tweets and hashtags. Now, finally, we need to have some data. This wouldn't be a very good example if we didn't have something to look at. So let's go ahead and just create an application runner bean that'll write some data to the database that we can use as an example here. So application runner, runner, you know, just producer. Sure, and we're going to use the uh, tweet repository to do this work. Tweet. Repository, return args, and create that. All right, so now we've got a repository, and we're going to save some data into the database. We need to create a few authors, of course. So I'll create a few authors here. We're going to pay homage to our friends on the ACA team over at Lightbend. This is a 
Jonas, who's the uh, founder of Akka. Okay, so J Bone. That's it. These are Twitter handles, of course. Victor equals new author. Victor Clang, the legend of Clang. And uh, my name is Josh, of course. So I'll just put myself in there as well, since I'm a. I'm just about out of names. There we are. Good. So we have now three different authors. We need to create some tweets. So let's say flux.just, and we're going to say, Woot Conrad will be talking about hashtag enterprise, hashtag integration, done right, hashtag aka, hashtag alpaca. I'm going to use Victor. Okay. There's that one. And then we'll have strings here. So I'm going to create a tweet out of this instead. Victor, very good. And then we'll have another one. This one will be new tweet Scala implies, implicits can easily be used to model capabilities, but can they in Code obligations easily. Easily as in ergonomically. That's Victor. Okay, so these are, this is me typing up some tweets, so we have to make sure we get these right. So, new tweet. This is so cool. Baka. All right, so there we go. Good, another one. And we want a new tweet. We need the oh, by the way, we need the um, this, the tweet object doesn't have a constructor for without the ID. So let's go ahead and create one of those to make this job a little easier. I'll say text and author. Good. That'll be the missing constructor that we've. That, that's why this compiler's upset with me up here. So I'll now create some more. I'm going to have a cross data center replication of event sourced ACA actors soon available using CRDTs and more. Okay, and that's uh, Jonas. And let's see, new tweet. A reminder, Spring Boot lets you pair program with the Spring team. That's yours truly. And finally, new tweet. Whatever your next platform is, don't build it yourself. Whatever your next platform is, don't build it yourself. Even companies with the and motivation to do it fail. A lot. Okay, Josh. Right, very good. So there's our publisher of tweets. All right, so there's a runner. Publisher of tweets is this. And then finally, we need to save all that. So we're going to say a tweet repository, a repository dot delete all dot then many. And we're going to say tweet repository dot save all. Passing in the tweet flux. We're going to say then many and find everything. So repository dot find all. And then we're going to visit all the results that come back. We'll say, why don't you print it out? So system out colon print line. All right. So there we go. There's the logic that will run and start up the application and then write the data to the database. So that's good. It looks like we're on, on the right track here. Now, finally, we want to actually just see it all work. So let's go ahead and start the application and see what we get. First of all, it's up and running. Good. Localhost 8080 forward slash tweets. All right, there's all the tweets. Hashtags. There's all the hashtags, right? Deduped and everything. So that processing was done for us by Akka. Now let's review. Now that we've kind of got everything in place, there's a lot of stuff happening here. I want to make sure that we're on the same page. So we've got the basic types here that we're saving in the database, one of which has the ability to give us all of its own hashtags, just its own. It's going to unpack the text. It's going to parse it and find the hashtags. We also have 
a repository that's reactive and it's MongoDB aware, so it'll write to the database and so on. And then we have a service that gives us all the tweets and all of the hashtags, regardless of where the hashtags are to, to which tweet these hashtags belong. To do that, it gets all the tweets, and then it unpacks each one of those and gets all the hashtags. So basically at this point, we have a whole bunch of publishers or a whole bunch of collections of hashtags. And then we reduce it because we have, as I say, we have a publisher full of collections of hashtags. So we reduce it so that we take each set, set A and set B, and merge it into one set. So finally we have one big collection and that's what we have left over. And then finally, we're going to take all of that and then turn it into a sync. We're going to use Akka to do that. Now, Akka is an actor system. In this case, I'm using a local actor materializer. This is using a local actor system and an actor actor materializer. But actors can be distributed. There's no reason that this work couldn't act kind of like a like a tuple space, right? Or a, an actor system, you know, a distributed like Erlang. Uh, style actor system. Uh, there's no reason that this code, which is fun fundamentally asynchronous and non-blocking, there's no reason that that work couldn't have been done across thousands of ACAs in a cluster doing distributed computation. So in this case, I'm doing the computation in memory, right? I'm using a local actor materializer. The nice thing about actors, although in this case we're not really dealing with them, the nice thing about actors is that they give you a programming style that if you comply with that style, uh, guarantees certain results, right? It's a, it's a way of modeling systems that uh, it looks sort of like a message box. You have messages that get put in, and you can take those messages out. You don't have shared state, though. You don't have different actors talking to the same synchronized variable, for example, or at least you shouldn't. And if you write your code in that way, as a bunch of things that send messages to each other and deposit messages into each other's mailboxes, which those actors can then process as they're able to, then you can write systems that scale out and also are efficient. So this actor materializer is going to hydrate, if you will, our ACA streams flow and turn it into processing that runs in terms of these actors, but it's all going to be in the local in the local JVM. But again, as I say, it's worth stressing that because it's ACA, it's just a matter of configuration that these actors be distributed or not. Right? The code is the same, basically, save for the configuration for the actor materializer. We are doing this to demonstrate that you can have a Spring WebFlux application that talks to MongoDB using Spring and still take advantage of ACA Stream's project and the other things that build upon that, including Alpaca, which is their integration framework, and ACA itself, and so on. So there's a lot of a lot of benefits by having this base type, this common type that's uh, accessible from all these different projects. Suddenly, siloed communities that may not have been accessible before are now easy to get to. You can now write code that works and takes the um, best of breed components from different communities. So you could also write code that uses, for example, Vertex, or you could write code that uses ArcsJava 2, right? And, and there's no reason these things couldn't interoperate. All right, with that, we've looked at the Reactive Stream specification as a means to integrate different projects. Obviously, the Reactive Stream specification inspired the Java 9 support. So Java 9 has Java Util concurrent flow dot publisher, Java Util concurrent, concurrent flow dot subscriber, Java Util concurrent flow dot uh, processor, WTIL concur concurrent flow at subscription. These four types are mirror images of the same types in the Reactive Stream specification. And uh, in the same way, they give you interoperability. Of course, that uh, all depends, it all hinges upon, on, uh, it all hinges on people uh, embracing Java 9. And uh, now with uh, Java 10, uh, you know, already out there, and Java 11, uh, very close to being out there, you know, we're, we're in a good place. Um, so hopefully that'll be uh, a well entrenched option for a lot of developers uh, in the near future.